Okay, perfect. So, Stu, how are you? Fabulous. Great. How about you? I'm fine. Uh, we'll how much of this do you want on your podcast, or when do we start? How much of what? Sorry. Uh, this introductory uh, banter. Oh, just five, three minutes. Okay. And then are you going to record it and then translate it later? No, it's already on YouTube. Oh, we're we live? Are like, we are oh, live. okay. I understand <laughs> now. All right. So are, are you... Okay. Um, I was just thinking, the last time I saw you, uh, Catherine and I left Canada and it was minus 40 Celsius. Whoa. And then we uh, dropped down into Rio and it was plus 40. So <laughs> in that nine hour flight, we went through... 80 degrees Celsius, minus to positive Crazy. 40. Yeah, yeah. And then we came over. I, we saw you in Rio. No, um, it was uh, Sao Paulo. Sao Paulo. No, in Rio also. Oh, was we it saw, in Rio? We saw, in Rio first yeah. for uh, one of her classes. Right. And then another one in Rio, in right. Sao Paulo, sorry. But I yes. live in Rio. Actually, in Niterói, it's a city of like 30, 40 minutes from Rio. Right. And then uh, you and Hugo, who I met. Yeah, he's taking Antonella to school right now. So that's why he can't be here. He sent you a big hug. Okay. Likewise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So can we start? Yes, please. So guys, I'm here today with a very special guest. Stu, it's an honor to have you here with us. Thank you so, so much for accepting my invitation. Uh, for those who don't know him, this is Stuart McGill, Professor of Spine Biomechanics from Canada. So you are retired from university, right? What projects have you been working in the recent years? Well, I just uh, see patients here at BackFit Pro, which is uh, in my uh, home. So mm -hmm. uh, we can look around. Uh, I have my uh, patient... Uh, uh, assessment table and all the models of spine injury and then we go out uh, down into all of the various uh, spine rehab equipment that you see all the way down. I, I have it's more space here than I ever had at the university, believe it or not. It's a big space. Do you still live in Grievinghurst or something? Yes, it's in uh, central Ontario. Mm -hmm. um, about two hours north of Toronto. Mm -hmm. And have these work plans been affected by COVID-19 or? Well, yes, I used to travel a lot, as mm -hmm. you know, and uh, I stopped traveling and I put my courses online mm -hmm. and uh, I see patients just virtually now. But uh, you know how many cases of COVID we've had here in Muskoka? How, how no, many in the, in the last uh, three weeks, I think it is? How many? Zero. Zero. Really? Zero. That's awesome. Perfect. Yeah. So the government has done a good job. Yeah. And uh, hopefully we're uh, coming out of this. But, uh, of course, there's no travel allowed yet. And, yeah. Uh, I imagine. Unfortunately, yeah. we, I can say the same thing in Brazil. Things are not well, but... Um, it's not forever. It will change. So hopefully uh, people can uh, behave in the most scientifically valid way and uh, yeah. get through this the best. Yeah. Here in Brazil, I've decided to change my PT uh, as a personal trainer work to a consulting program about core stability and strength. But this is a topic for another chat. Can we start? Yes. So, Sue, uh, most of my followers are lay. So, could you explain a little more about the principles of spine stability and why is this so important? Do you have any spine models with you over there to explain I, this idea? I, I do. There's three critical elements to uh, core stability. Um, we live in a linkage. So this is a link, this is a link, this is a link, my legs are a link. So I have to control this linkage uh, to create movement. But there's a law that governs how a linkage works. So if I went over here to create a 
push force. Uh, let me see. I'll do it on this side. Can you see me now, Mariana? Yeah, yeah, yeah. perfect. Yeah. So if I wanted to push and move this weight, if I didn't create core stability, as I pushed the weight, all I would do is push myself away. Well, that's not very uh, helpful. So I had to create a certain amount of what's called proximal stiffness to create the ability to push, pull, carry a bag of groceries, pick my child out of the crib, uh, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So core stability allows us to push and pull and move around. The second part of stability comes from the spine being a flexible rod. So the spine is many bones. Think of a stack of oranges. It's like a stack of oranges and we can move the stack of oranges around. However, if I then carried two bags of groceries and squeezed the stack of oranges, they would just fall apart. So the muscles arranged around the spine add stiffness, like a girdle, a controlling stiffness that allows the spine to uh, bear load. So here is a model of a spine that I've put a wire rod uh, down the middle to add stiffness. So we can apply uh, perturbations to that rod and it stays upright like I am with you now. But if I take the muscle and the stiffness away, you can see the rod just collapses. Sure. So you need a certain amount of core stability uh, to hold up this flexible rod. Well, a flexible rod is wonderful. It allows us to dance and tie our shoes and all of these things. But when I pick up my child off the ground or I put groceries in the car, I need to have a certain amount of core stiffness so my spine just doesn't collapse. Now, those of your listeners who've had spine injury, think of when it occurred. It occurred when you were out of position and you didn't have the right amount of core control, which I know you teach mm -hmm. uh, to your clients. And there's something else very special about the way that you train core stability. The brain remembers those patterns. So when you do a bird dog and activate the various parts of the backside, uh, the brain remembers that pattern and it's a healthy pattern that transfers to putting the groceries into the car and it stops getting out of position and uh, overloading a certain part of your back. The final part of uh, core stability has to do with what happens when you have an injury. Um, consider your knee, for example. Let's see now, I'll do, there's my knee. Say I damage the ligaments in my knee. As a therapist, you will do a drawer test, pull the knee and see if there's a laxity in your knee. So you get these lax micro movements with injury and that causes pain it causes you to limp so the brain feels that laxity and it's it makes you limp and it won't allow you to put full load on that lax joint your spine is exactly the same so in this particular model i'm showing three lower vertebra plus your pelvis so this fits in my body about here. Now, this joint has been damaged just a little bit. It's lost its stiffness. This is normal and this is normal, but this is the lax one. Watch, I'm going to twist around like this. When I twist around like this, do you see that the majority of the motion takes place at the damaged joint? It's lost its stiffness. So when we look at the back, these joints at that level, do you see them taking all the motion, Marianne? These yes, ones here? I can see. Yeah. Yes. And it starts to irritate these nerves coming out at that level and they go down uh, your back and into your buttock and down the back of your leg and that kind of thing. So if people would then perform the core stability routines that you give them, that micro movement that's triggering their pain is arrested. It's stiffened up with fit,
core muscles. Now they can walk and uh, not trigger pain. They can reach around for something and that stiffness and control keeps their spine not triggering pain with sloppy micro movements. So those are the three essential elements of core stability and why it's so important for people to have educated movement patterns and wise movement patterns because it unleashes pain-free ability. You know, the, the martial arts have survived around the world for millennia, 2,000 years. Brazil has a very special martial art with capoeira and, and some of the MMA, the fabulous martial artists that come from Brazil, a very rich history. Some of it comes from Japan, some of it comes from Russia, some of it comes from all over the world. But the point of it is it's very clever. It unleashes pain-free power out of your body. Every single martial art involves strength oh, coming yeah. from the core, the proximal part of the body. So core stability matters, posture matters. Uh, it survives centuries. And so just, just by bracing, we can correct micro movements? Well, yes, um, but the bracing has to be right. So mm -hmm. uh, too much bracing imposes compression on a person's spine and that might hurt them. So if I gave you an example, if you took one of your clients and they sat on a chair and instead of holding two bags of groceries, they pull up on the chair to simulate that extra weight down their back. Now, if they sat upright and they pulled up and they said, no, that doesn't cause my pain. You see, it's not compression that causes their pain. If they slouch like this and they say, oh yeah, that causes my pain. All right, posture matters to them. But if they twist around now and you say, ah, oh, well that causes my pain and you will coach them, you'll say, push your fingers into the lateral obliques. Now push the obliques out and stiffen and hold that. Now, twist around, oh yes, my pain is gone. So through assessment, it shows you very precisely what the right amount of bracing is to take their pain away. So if I was just to stand here with no pain at all, uh, I'd, and, and if I don't have any pain, I don't need any bracing. Just mm -hmm. relax hover the ears over the shoulders, the shoulders over the hips, the hips over the knees, and the knees over the middle of the foot. Become a leaning tower and just try and stand with no muscle. If there's no pain, I don't need bracing. In fact, I shouldn't use any. But if I stand on one leg and I do a knee circle and I get back pain, now it's time to dial up the control add a little bit of core bracing. So now I'll say, push my fingers out. Now shift your weight onto one leg and do a knee circle. And they'll say, oh yes, now I'm pain-free. Now I can walk upstairs pain-free. I can push the stroller with my child pain-free. I can carry the grocery bags. I can now do work uh, pain-free. If I'm going to pick up 50 kilo, I need even more stiffness and paying attention to organizing the right amount of core stiffness. So bracing is a variable. I dial it up and I dial it down to match the specific task. And that's what you do with your teachings. You teach people the wisdom of so adjust just the amount of bracing that they need depending on, on what they, they are doing. Correct. Okay, so you say it so much better than me. No, no, <laughs> and my English is like so bad. But okay, <laughs> if you can hear me and and understand what I'm saying, it's fine. <laughs> so, uh, so and I, as I learned it with you years ago, keep keeping the spine in a neutral position under load is essential for spine resilience, right? But what about daily activities such as feeding a baby and getting a baby from the crib or getting some heavy bags from the floor and carrying them? How can we introduce spine hygiene principles on everyday tasks? Is there any way to perform these activities to improve spine resilience? 
Right. Well, again, when you work with a client, you assess them and you determine their pain triggers. So sometimes, just like bracing, you added more or less to meet the activity. Um, neutral spine is exactly the same thing. So if I went down on my uh, hands and knees, can you see me now if I'm yes. here? Yes. So if I did a cat camel like this, um, and that doesn't trigger any pain, I'm moving my spine and it's quite fine. There's, there's no real issue. However, if I bend down to pick my child out of the crib and I prepared that now. So here's my beautiful little baby uh, <laughs> all wrapped up and there's my baby. So if I just bend over and pick up my baby and that triggers pain, I have to stop and say, now what was it? Was the bracing incorrect or was the curve of my spine incorrect and triggering pain? So you teach them, um, remember the, well, I know you do this, the squat where you put the hands on the thighs and you move back and you grab. It's hip hands. Yes. Now you grab the knees hard and you carry weight down your arms. Now you can look at my back. Yeah. I can arch my back out like a cat or a camel and I can do the opposite. But you work with the client to find that beautiful sweet spot curve and then leaning tower through the ankles, push your toes down and now push the shoulders away from the ears. Do you see this is a shrug? And this is the opposite, an anti-shrug. Find that combination where there's no pain and then shrug into it and don't move your back after that. Just pull your hips through. It's a different way of thinking. Instead of lifting with your back, you pull your hips through. So you may have, I'm sure your clients have heard, you lift with your knees, bend your knees. Not true. You lift actually with your hips. Yes. Yeah. So now I'm I've say I've perfected that beautiful curve. I might go over to the wall here. Can you no you can't, no, uh, I can't. Yeah. I'm just going to turn just a tiny bit mm -hmm. and say I went over to the wall and I plank on the wall and I can curve my back and I can extend and I can flex and I can find that beautiful curve. Then I dial up the control, a little bit of stiffness. I stay in that curve. Then I walk over to the crib. It's two o'clock in the morning. The baby's crying and hungry. Now I walk up to the crib. I go down into that beautiful squat that we learned. And then I pull my baby towards me and I pull my hips through. So now I've transferred the basic skill of the hip hinge and I've transferred it into picking up my child or maybe when I'm brushing my teeth, I can now go up to the bathroom counter. I can support my body. I can brush my teeth. I can spit out and finish, put my hands and complete the pattern ensuring that I don't trigger any back pain. And then I repeat that pattern over and over. And after a while, I don't have to think about it anymore. It's a new default pattern of being pain-free. So it's, you know, you develop painful habits and you develop pain-free habits. And that's what good movement is. It's what the great Brazilian martial artists use to uh, uh, move well and efficiently and pain-free, uh, etc. So if people can take those same principles to daily life, life is free. The free movement hacks and now movement makes you healthy rather than Perfect. painful. So posture matters, right? Sorry? So posture matters, right? Yeah, who, who on earth would say posture doesn't matter? It's a small thing. I mean, People I can take my finger. On internet. <laughs> well, uh, I think they should attend Brazilian jiu-jitsu class. And the Brazilians <laughs> will teach them that, yeah, you bend a joint out of posture, you tap and submit. Yeah, Otherwise, your true. arm will tear. So it's, it's astounding 
that uh, these people, uh, they just need to go to Brazilian jiu-jitsu class. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, we've experienced during the pandemic, lots of time sitting with home office. What tips can you give uh, for those who spent most of the day in a sitting position? Well, there's lots of things. Um, get out of the chair and uh, stand up. We're not made to sit hour after hour. So spread your knees apart, get your feet underneath you, get up out of the chair, and then one of the best drills to mitigate the time spent in the chair is then reach for the sky and then move your arms back and then fully and deeply inhale. Suck up lots of air, and it lifts the diaphragm off the pelvic floor, and it we can measurably measure the stress this, that this relieves that's been accumulating in the back during sitting. Uh, and then make yourself more resilient to pain by doing your core uh, exercises, the big three, the bird dog, the side plank, and the curl up, going for interval walks, short interval walks throughout the day. Very helpful for um, preventing back pain when you sit in, in many people. So, the, the, you know, basically follow back mechanic. What's the name in, in Portuguese for the back mecânico mechanic? Da lombar. Mecânico da lombar. That's it. So you can get that book at um, Backfit Pro Brazil. Uh, you, you maybe you can post that website for people. But uh, yes, that's the English book, <laughs> yeah. and then the uh, Brazilian. It was it was translated in Portugal in um, uh, Rio Sim. for uh, the Brazilians. So uh, you could post the website where they can uh, get yeah, that from Backfit Pro Brazil. Thank you. That will help sure. people. And it's true. Uh, there's a, a maximum amount of time, or uh, I'm sure it depends, but an average of how long people can stay uh, sitting without uh, or trying to keep a, a best posture or a neutral spine or bracing or just after five, ten minutes, we tend to relax. It, you mean for sitting? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's a variable and it's different for everybody. You know that there are some people that can sit all day. They're just absolute couch potatoes and they have no pain. Mm -hmm. Yet active people with kids and they have to sit at work and then they have to do ch things with their kids, they get back pain. And it's a very individual thing. So some people like to have a lumbar support in the back of their chair. So with those people, what I would suggest they do is they roll up uh, a towel or they get their um, hands behind them in the uh, back of the chair. Like a back support or something. Yes. So there's a back support, if you can see that, in the back of this chair with a little uh, pump on it, for example. It's one that we use here at BackFit Pro. Just lean back, pump up the lumbar support, and relax. And this allows people to sit with uh, less pain. But how do you know if it's going to work for you? Just put your hands, palms down behind your back, and lean back and see if that is more uh, comfortable. If um, sitting on a couch watching the television causes your pain, you can't sit on a couch, I'm sorry. It causes you to slump into your pain versus sitting on a harder chair like this, perhaps roll up a towel and uh, put it in your low back lift your chest and relax your uh, shoulders against the back of the chair and you'll find all of a sudden watching the television now becomes tolerable and doesn't trigger your pain. So there's there's a few nuances to this. The, the, the answer isn't the same for everybody, but with your help, you can coach them uh, and the book does as well to help them realize their own personal specific pain triggers and uh, how to find strategies to uh, address their own personal triggers. Perfect. 
Uh, and Shu, uh, before we finish, let's talk a little bit about women who have been pregnant. Could you share with us any specific guidance on strengthening the core after childbirth? Well, the problem with uh, pregnant women is uh, I've only ever contributed to the situation. I, I have no personal experience <laughs> with. <laughs> yes, that brings us, right? Yes, but uh, in any case, and by the way, that was with my wife, so no one hates me uh, on, on this. But um, uh, here's when we get patients here at BackFit Pro, Mariana, uh, and they're postpartum, they've had children, and now they have laxity. You know, this type uh, subcategory of back pain that I was showing with the loose joints, or they might have a loose SI joint, which we see here that's triggering their uh, pain. Um, try and do the stiffening big three exercises for that. Um, some women, uh, there's a lot of pressure on the modern woman to get fit immediately after uh, giving birth. And my advice to them is calm down. You've been through a bit of trauma. The hormonal differences and changes have caused more laxity to the joints. Just let all of this settle for a little while and then slowly uh, get back into the back mechanic program, interval walks, adding in the core stability and now get the fitness back to become resilient to life. But don't try too hard too soon is my uh, common advice uh, for that one. Perfect, perfect. So we are almost finishing here, but before I let you guys go, I would like to recommend Shu's website, uh, backfitpro.com, I'll write later. The website is incredible, but there's one specific book called Bad Mechanics that we already so we, we were talking about it. Uh, and there's a translation to Portuguese called Mecânico da Coluna. And it's essential for everyone. And it was written uh, for the lay public, right, Sue? So it's yeah, very uh, simple uh, to understand. Yeah, I'd written several books for the doctors, for clinicians. And I never thought I would write for the lay public. But uh, a book editor came to me and said, well, I, we've read your medical book. Could you possibly write one for the lay public? And it was such a difficult thing to do, Mariana, because uh, they wanted me to write a book, Fix Your Back in Three Easy Steps. And I said, that's a lie. It doesn't <laughs> exist. I can't do it. Um, there has to be... Uh, a part in it where a person can be guided through a self-assessment because if you go to your doctor with back pain you won't get a good assessment to understand the cause you'll probably get a pain pill or a modality like a uh, I don't know could be a manipulation or a massage or something like that but it doesn't get to the cause so uh, it, it's 17 chapters actually and uh, it guides the person through a self-assessment of their back pain, uh, and then it shows them quite precisely what to do and not do. So, as I, I said, I needed a certain amount of scientific content to guide the reader, but it also had to be consumable by a non-medical person. So I hope I found the balance, but uh, that was how Back Mechanic came together. It's incredible. I, I love this book. So I always recommend it to my clients with back pain and for everyone. I, I think it's really essential for everyone, everyone thinking about spine resilience and just everyone that wants to understand a little more about uh, self-care and resilience and spine stability. So um, that's it, Sue. Uh, we are finishing here. I'm so glad that you could share your time with us, for being available, for chatting with me and my followers. Do you have any specific thing that you would like to say to wrap up? Yes, just to you. Uh, it was great to see you again. And cheers to you and uh, Hugo and Antonella. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> I'm very grateful for this interview. Send my love to Catherine and I hope to see you soon. Okay, obrigado.
<risos> Pessoal, muito obrigada pela presença de vocês. Eu espero que vocês tenham gostado. Depois eu vou traduzir essa entrevista e deixar lá no canal do YouTube da Treine Simples, tá bom? Obrigada, bye bye. Sure, thank I, I you. I know so what much. you said. Yeah? <laughs> really, really? You could yeah. understand? <laughs> A little bit, yeah. You have to be careful now. You can't be mean yeah. to me in Portuguese. <laughs> I'm going to translate to everyone later because I know that not everybody can could understand what we are saying. So, <laughs> right. Okay, Mariana. Well, good luck to you. Thank you. Okay, a boa sorte. You have plans to go to Brazil? A boa sorte. Have... Oh, boa sorte. Thank you. <laughs> Do you have any plans to come or just No, I, I have no no travel plans anymore. The world has changed yeah. and uh, we don't know. So I haven't made any plans and uh, I'm just enjoying life. Okay. <laughs> I I'm, hope to I'm, see you so I'm, anyway. I'm Brazilian now, so I have to just enjoy life. <laughs> sure. <laughs> okay, Sue. Thank you so much. Okay. Bye-bye.